want us to talk about these wonderful scriptures and what they mean to us, the church. Now, these things are not for the world. They're for us, the body of Christ. If my people, are you his people? Oh, yeah, me too. Praise God. And I'm glad I am. But he says, if my people, which are called by my name, the children of God, it's Jesus. He's the king of kings. If they shall humble themselves and pray. Now, see, that's, a, that's the plan. You know, you think about, I know this probably was a joke, but one day there was a ship, and I think it was uh, supposed to have been the Titanic, and the captain runs down here, sends somebody run, knocking on everybody's door. As they open the door, pray. We may be going under. And one of the ladies says, you mean it's come to this. Did you get that? It's come to this. What? Prayer. You mean pray? We got to pray? It's come to this? Well, it should never be. That should be the last resort. What should we do all the time? Pray. But we, sure, we should have done that first. In other words, if I'm going to tell you, I'm going to make a statement here. Of course, that's already been happened. That's done and over and sealed and years ago. But if that captain, when Cheryl and I went to Ireland to preach over there, we drove right by the shipyard where they built the Titanic. And the guy that lived there that come picked us up, he said, this is the shipyard. That's David and Goliath, those cranes. Those huge cranes are the two cranes they used to build the Titanic with. Wow. Huh, what? No, I'm David and Goliath, I thought. But anyway, David and Goliath, I thought. But anyway, I might be wrong on that, but I thought that's what he said. But he said, anyway, those two ships, said when they got that big, gigantic ship built, he said the captain stood up on the deck before they was getting ready to leave and says, God, even you can't sink this ship. Isn't that amazing? Now, this is a man that lived in Ireland that knew these stories that the captain, they're getting ready to go to this humongous, gigantic ship. God, even you can't sink this ship. The stupidity of idiots. I mean, we don't have a clue who he is. And he said, okay, no problem. I'll just let, we got seven compartments in this thing, and this thing can stay afloat with any compartment seal, so God, even you can't sink this ship. We got a full one inch of armor plate from the beginning to the end, and there ain't nobody can rip open a one inch piece of solid steel. And so God said, okay. He wasn't excited at all, was he? And they go running down there, and all of a sudden, right at the very tip of the ship, they hit an iceberg, and it punches right through that one-inch steel and just slits it open. And as the ship goes by from beginning to end, it rips that ship open with a crack in it about so wide from beginning to end through every sealable compartment. And cold ice water starts flowing in. And we all know the results. They didn't even have enough lifeboats. They were so sure they didn't even put enough lifeboats on there to take all the people. And so the Titanic, the unsinkable Titanic, when a stupid guy would set up there and say, God, even you can't sink this boat. We don't know him very well, do we, ma'am? No, we don't know him. We don't even know him in the church. You know, the average church member is not afraid of God anymore. That's why we go out and sin and do what we do. We don't have a clue. And then we get sick. And it's all because of sin. You know? And so God does everything in the world to try to get us to turn. He's so loving, kind, and patient. He gives us years and talks to us and then tries to woo us into his word and everything else. And most of us don't listen. And so toward 40, 50, 60 years people start coming down with sickness and disease, cancer, and people die. A lot of them die. They never hear about the healing power of Jesus. They never get it. But when they do, wow, let's see what happens here. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and shall seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and then I will heal their land. So what's the answer? God is the answer. 
It ain't never too late. If you and I are walking in obedience to God's word, loving him and serving him and do what he says, did that Psalm 91 say he would protect us? Ooh, you better know Psalms 91, right? You better be calling him in remembrance of Psalm 91. Lord, you said. We only see the one part about God. He's a loving God in the heavens that's not going to do anything to hurt us. He would never give you a spanky. Well, you ain't read the book very good. You know, he, he has provided for us. I mean, just think, like you said, the, the, the mercy and the grace of God that, I mean, well, I think about that other man. I can't think of his name, but the other man that last year that God let one of his little grandchildren, about a year old, roll off the side of the bed and get hung between the side of the bed and the wall. Just exactly right. So the little guy smothered to death. And, and he didn't listen either. And so a year later, this man was sending his two daughters, his two son-in-laws, and three or four of his grandbabies, and one or two friends, and the pilot of his airplane. He had a, a single-engine turboprop, about a four or five million dollar airplane, and they were going into Montana to go to the Millionaire's Club to ski for a few days. And they're coming in on final approach, and all of a sudden, 500 feet from the end of the runway, there's a graveyard. And in the graveyard, it's a Catholic graveyard. And right there is a tomb called the tomb to the unborn child. The Catholics had put that there for all the babies that have been aborted. And he's on final approach. Now, the man that owns the airplane is not in it. Him and his wife are driving up, but his children, grandchildren, and all, and his friends, 14 of them, are all on that airplane. And they get right at the end of the runway, and all of a sudden, the airplane just says, pitches straight down and crashes into the ground, explodes, and everybody on it is totally killed. And it crashed right beside the tomb of the unborn child. And that was on the news about the airplane crash. But it wasn't on the news that it crashed right beside the unknown tomb of the unknown child, unborn child. And nobody ever told you that he owned the largest set of abortion chain clinics in the United States. He has been responsible for tens of thousands of abortions. God tried to get his attention too when he killed that first child, grandchild of his, but he didn't listen. So next time, God wiped out his whole family and all his grandchildren. Somebody said, God would never do a thing like that. Oh yeah, he will. Oh, don't you put him to the test. I mean, I ain't putting him to the test. Are you, Jack? He is the boss. And he's God. And he loves you. And he wants to do good for you. And the beautiful part about it is, if you love and worship God and do what he says, there ain't nothing he withholds from them that he loves. That he, that, that's obey him.